are going to start with the category gymnosperms and angiosperms. Under this we are going to discuss the basic characteristics of gymnosperms and angiosperms and few of the examples. Let's start with the first one that is gymnosperms. Gymnosperms, the term was introduced by the scientist Theophrastus. The term was introduced by the scientist Theophrastus. Next is gymnosperms are the connected link between pteridophytes and angiosperms. In our previous lecture we discussed about bryophytes and pteridophytes. So it's a connecting link between pteridophytes and angiosperms. Next one is these are seed bearing plants but they are non flowering Flowers are not there in case of gymnosperms. They are more ancient than angiosperms and they are perennial. Giant redwood tree which is called as sequoia is the tallest tree species. It's not only the tallest gymnosperm, it is the tallest tree species. Next is S. gigantea. This is the oldest gymnosperm and it's the oldest gymnosperm and its life is 4000 to 5000 years old it is. Next is Zamina. Zamina is the smallest gymnosperm. So three examples are here and these are important. If you are asked which is the tallest tree species, you have to answer Sikia. And if you are asked which is the oldest gymnosperm, you have to answer as Gigantia. If you are asked smallest gymnosperm, then you will answer Zamina. Maybe you might be asked that what is the age of the oldest gymnosperm as Gigantia? Then you have to answer 4000 to 5000 years. In biology, questions are changed. The meaning of questions are changed by interchanging the words. Next is, in case of gymnosperm, tap roots are found generally. Not always, but generally tap roots are there. Next is, stems under gymnosperms are of two types. One is branched, which is pinus, and one is unbranched, which is an example having cycas. Next is, gymnosperms are heterosporous. Heterosporous, that is why they will produce two spores. One is microspore and one is megaspore. But these are haploid. These spores are haploid. Next is types of gymnosperm wood. We are going to discuss two types of gymnosperm wood here. One is the monoxylic and one is the pycnoxylic wood. Monoxylic wood is formed in one ring. It is formed in one ring and why is it so? Due to the persistent cambium. In plant tissues you have learnt about cambium. What is cambium? Next is the example under monoxylic wood is pinus. Pinus is the example of monoxylic wood. And it reproduces by means of spores. Only by means of spores, pinus reproduces. There is no other means of reproduction. And it is saprophyte. That is, it is having two eggs. It is saprophyte and it is heterosporous. So again, it will have two spores. 
and second one is the monocot. As the name indicates, dye. Dye means two cotyledons. It's having two cotyledons. Mono means one cotyledons. It's having one cotyledon. Flowers in case of dicotyledonous plants are tetramerous or pentamerous. What is tetramerous or pentamerous nature of plants? They are having tetra means four, penta means five. They are having four or five flowers in a whole. Next is the same thing I have explained that the seeds are with two cotyledons. Comes monocotyledons. Under monocotyledons, flowers are trimerous. It means three flowers are there in one whole. These are having one cotyledon. Examples are cereals and bamboos. So this was all about the lecture under angiosperms and gymnosperms. We have discussed basic classifications as well.